Hey folks, Mike here again. Um, today I want to talk about um, some basic little tricks um, where you can increase like the, the um, dynamic range from your drum sample recording when using e-drums. For um, today I've picked the um, um, performance from my good buddy Jason Ozent, Beats by Jay. Um, shout out to Jay. Um, I mixed, as some of you might know, I mixed the uh, Fat Bottom Girls drum cover for him uh, some month ago, which turned out pretty well. Uh, Jay did an amazing performance on this one. And I've picked this example because he had some really great tom fills on that. Um, and I've like will load up um, the MIDI performance from Jay. Um, as you can see here on the lineup, um, he's like pretty tight drummer. Um, and I've highlighted uh, that first part. This is kind of the first drum fill that occurs within the song. Uh, and usually for all of you who are using e-drums um, might know that problem. And I see this quite a lot when like watching some other guys performing or listen to some audio or when they send me their tracks to mix them for, for them. Uh, it really depends on your e-drums, of course, on your settings within the module. Uh, but most of the time, especially when you're kind of like a, kind of a hard hitter like Jason definitely is, um, which, uh, the thing what we all love about him. But usually um, the drums are recorded quite hot, with me, which means um, MIDI data inform information when triggering drum samples have kind of a range between 0 and 127, uh, which um, is like kind of a, um, yeah, it's not like mirroring the real dynamic range that a human drummer um, on an acoustic drum would have. But it can work. But the, the thing is when you're like hitting all the drums with the highest velocity, um, especially when you're not like setting up your model at the right time, it can sound like quite linear and not dynamic at all. And this is one thing that especially acoustic drummers um, often like blame when using um, electronic drums that they like not capture the the real um, dynamic performance that an acoustic drum would have. But you can fix that. So let's have a listen um, on that track. Um, this is the first drum fill uh, within the song. I will just play the loop and then we talk about that. So let's have a listen. So this was the first drum fill um, that happened in the song. And uh, as I said, Jason is a really great drummer um, and he did uh, quite well during his performance. Um, but when he sent me the drums, uh, the MIDI file um, or the MIDI information, most of the notes were like played uh, with uh, the velocity uh, on 127, which is basically the loudest hit or the loudest sample the software will like trigger if you play that. Um, and this is the drum fill, so let's have a listen on the drums on their own. So when I now highlight all the drums and like raise up all the volume to 127, this is what it sounds like. This might sound okay, okay, but it's not capturing like the real uh, dynamic range from an acoustic drummer. So what you then uh, can do is just go into that um, MIDI performance that you see here that will record when you uh, um, hit the drums. And I just like take a step back what I did before. And as you can see, when you look down here in the bottom, I've just like changed, whoops, I've just like, um, changed some of the velocity range of that um, of that um, particular drums. So like the uh, the second and the fourth hit uh, and this one and this one, I just decreased the volume slight a bit, um, not nothing more. Like you don't want like to drop it down in volume. So like um, to like drop it down here because then it will sound really unnatural because it will basically disappear. So like um, find a balance between like 110 to 127, kind of that, so that it's real, uh, still noticeable, but you have like kind of a dynamic. So I, I want you to listen very closely and I assume that you're listening on good headphones anyway. So just let, have a listen when I play now the, the, the tom fill from Jason with that slight amount of changes um, during the fill. And then I will like bring all the velocity uh, back to 107 and listen uh, on the different sound. And now in contest with the music.
of course it's a quite subtle move but it really can like enhance your track and give it a, like a more overall balanced volume and a more natural volume um this is so like um you of course you have to rely on your musical like um performance and your musical uh, sense of dynamics so really like want to capture out um what's going on how like a real drummer would hit the drums because um a, a human being wouldn't hit the drum like exactly the same way two times in a row especially on like um some faster fills and i will show you another example where that really crazy uh fill within the song is happening which um jason c uh, did quite well he really made that fill so let's have a listen on that i will just um switch like a point just before so here it is i think so let's have a listen So really great fill, uh, Jason. Um, I, I simply love hearing that. Um, but you can see down here, I've just slightly um, changed them as well because on that fill uh, that Jason did, um, he like he, he's a hard hitter and this is no problem. But the file he sent me was like more like this one because like he really like put some pressure in that and this is how it sounds. And again, back with a slight dynamics. As I said, all those little um, changes are quite subtle, but they can really like give you the track and your performance like like that little extra uh, portion of um, natural feeling and an overall more human sound. And when I now open up Superior Doma, and for all of you like using Superior Doma will probably know this. Uh, Superior Doma has, uh, by the by the way, Jason, this is the drum set I used for you. Uh, the Metal Foundry. Uh, Superior Drama has kind of a unique feature um, within the trigger response. Uh, when you like pick some of the drum shells, for, some, for example this rectum, uh, on the right uh, side you have that humanize function, uh, which is basically, um, which I always like uh, enable. You see like the alternate function, which you can disable and enable. And what this basically does is during the recording session of Superior Drummer, um, the drummer who recorded the samples um, and the guys from Toontrack recorded the drum sample not only when the drummer was hitting with the right hand, but with the left hand as well. Because for all you drummers out there and musicians and producers and mixers will know that it's kind of a um, subtle and but a slight change in sound when you hit your drum with the right hand or your left hand. And by enabling this, um, the software will like kind of randomly trigger the samples from the right hand and the left hand. So you get like even a more natural feeling from the software itself. So by enabling this one and the slight changes that I showed you just before with that um, slight dynamic range, you can really like create a, a bit more uh, natural feeling. This is something most of your like viewers on YouTube maybe not even recognize, but this is like um, the last 5% that like make your drum rip, uh, recording or drum performance like from good uh, to really top level. So um, that was for me for that little trick. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, as always, leave a comment below, uh, ask me some questions. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.